Um, so any questions from the audience? Please feel free to ask. Um, I would have a question, if I may. Go on. Um, so yeah. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Um, can you maybe go back to slide number 21? Ah. ah, this one exactly. Um, so I'm just curious, maybe you said it and I just missed it, but you construct your uh, finite temperature KDT zero by adding one quarter of this uh, exchange um, Hartree Fock and three quarters from this KDT 16. So where do these factors one quarter and three quarter uh, come from? Oh, those are. Uh... Uh, those, yeah, those are the uh, fractions of uh, exact exchange that are used in uh, the original PDE zero functional. Um, they, they are, uh, they result from uh, 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 they tie to the adiabatic connection uh, formula. Uh, is, so in uh, Constructing uh, uh, in constructing uh, hybrids where uh, the fraction of a Hartree Fock exact exchange, uh, right? So in constructing hybrids, the fraction of Hartree Fock exact exchange is not really universal, right? It, uh, um, uh, it 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 is, uh, depends on it, it, depends on system and actually this fraction of actual exact exchange can be uh is actually uh tied to the dielectric constant uh, and uh one, one can use uh right for example experimentally determine dielectric constant to to figure out this fraction and you get you get much you get significant in, uh, you know increase in accuracy that way. Some people do that. It can be you know self consistently determined. Um, and uh, HSC zero six. Uh, um, uh, this is uh, um, no. Uh, uh, sorry, no. Yeah, you don't have that in uh, HSC zero six. But uh, PBE PBE zero is a is the uh, first order approximation to this fraction of Hartree Fock exact exchange is based on the um, adiabatic connection uh, and it's one quarter. We haven't, uh, right, so this is probably also temperature dependent, right? It's not just probably system dependent, it's also probably temperature dependent, but we haven't looked into it, into that. We just took the, the PBE zero as, as um, uh, it comes, which is with the quarter, which is what a quarter hard report exact exchange, and we, we just went with that. Okay, thank you. And um, if I may, I would have a second question. Yeah. Um, I think it's slide uh, 36, although I'm not 100% uh, certain. It was uh, on this finite temperature scan on your of yours. Maybe you can go to this formula. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly this one. Um, if I understand it correctly, you construct this finite temperature uh, scan exchange correlation functional basically by using the um, ground state um, hybrid functional, so to say, and then plus this finite temperature correction, meaning uh, finite temperature effects on a GGA level, basically the difference between uh, KDT and uh, PBE. That's, that's exactly right. Yes. So my, and, yeah. Yeah. So my, my question would be, um, do you have any idea or can, can you somehow um, estimate how important like uh, really fi the finite temperature hybrid part would be? Meaning um, if you could make the first part of this formula uh, temperature dependent, can, can you somehow estimate this? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, it is probably small because to make this fully thermal, right? So that is, yes, that is a very, yes, that's a very good question. So to make this a fully thermal uh, scanner, you will uh, also need, uh, so, okay. So in terms of these formulas here, you'd have like a meta GGA level thermal correction, right? That will include temperature, uh, that will in include, uh, thermal effects at the Laplacian level, right? Um, 
So here GGA only takes density and gradient of density, right? But here, scan L, it takes density, depends on density, gradient of density, and Laplacian of the density. So what we neglect, right, in this formula is uh, thermal effects at the Laplacian, uh, like uh, in the Laplacian of the density. But those, the, uh, the contributions due to the Laplacian of the density are usually small themselves. So we expect that thermal effects in the Laplacian of density will also be uh, very small. But we're, we're also working on that. We're also working on a fully thermal, uh, uh, fully thermalized version of, of uh, Scanel. Uh, well, actually, we're, we're working on a fully thermalized version of um, what uh, they call regularized restored Scanel. It's much uh, faster computationally. It's much, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it produces identical results, but it's, it's, much, it's much faster. But yeah, that's a good question. And I, the answer is that they would be small because Laplacian uh, contributions are small themselves. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking very much forward to this completely uh, temperature dependent scan. Um, a related question, maybe. Um, your functionals and KDT, but also um, the more sophisticated functionals, um, are they already uh, openly available in something like LibXC? Uh, KSDT, yes. Uh, I, I think uh, Valentin is working with, uh, uh, I, I, I forgot his name from LibXC uh, to put KDT 16 in, but it's not there yet. KSDT is in uh, LibXC. Uh, and once KDT 16 is in LibXC, uh, you, can, uh, yeah, you, can con you can construct this yourself, right? You can call ScanL, which, well, uh, ScanL or regularized restored ScanL, which are both already in LibXC, and you can call this, uh, you can call KSDT and PBE and just take the difference between them. Yeah. Once KDT 16 is in there, we also have ScanL, ther thermal ScanL or thermal regularized restored ScanL, and you can also construct uh, hybrids too. Yeah. So KSDT and correct, co correct, corrected KSDT is you know, a correction to the some of the parameters in the original KSDT publication. But yeah, um, they're both uh, KSDT and core KSDT are in LibXC, but not KSDT. We're working on it. Uh, not KDT 16. We're working on that to get it in there now. Okay, thank you. I mean, we have, we have used KSCT and, and corrected KSCT, but KDT and the more sophisticated functionals are, of course, very interesting uh, as well. To us. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, my guess is we'll soon, yeah, my guess is we'll soon have a mini vaccine. Yeah. Um, very cool. Uh, I have a question. Can you hear me? Uh, is this pin polarized version of this available too? Or have we tested it? I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, uh, yeah, the spin. Yeah, we have spin polarized versions, uh, and I believe the it, core KSDT is yeah spin polarized in LibXC. And once KDT sixteen comes out, uh, we'll uh, we'll have the the yeah 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 we'll have spin we'll have spin in there. Um, another question from my end then. Have you guys been thinking about uh, these van der Waals functionals that are often used uh, to describe hydrogen and maybe uh, finer temperature versions of this of this uh, van, der, van der Waals idea? Um, no, not not yet. Um, um, I'm uh, I'm trying. Um, well, here we use uh, van der Waals in. Um, Oh, well, Van der Waals are this RVV10 functional uh, in combination. You can, yeah, you can, uh, you, you can combine, uh, you know, uh, scanner or thermal scanner with RVV10. And uh, then I, if I understand your question correctly is, uh, do we have a finite temperature version of this RVV10? 
I mean, if you have a finer temperature version, or if you can somehow estimate, or if you have a feeling if these Van der Waals effect are even important at finer temperature, because I often have heard the argument that these Van der Waals effects are comparably so small if you compare them to the thermal energy, that maybe they shouldn't even matter too much at these conditions. Uh, I, yeah, oh, I don't know. I haven't uh, heard, yeah, I haven't uh, really thought about it, to be honest. And I haven't heard that argument. They should be small either, but uh, you know, no one, no one is really uh, uh, considering them. So I assume, I, I, I assume they're not important. But uh, I don't know. No, we're currently not. No, no, we're not working on on that. Uh, but yeah, my guess would be that they would be that they would not that uh, the the ter the exchange correlation thermal effects will will be enough when uh well i'm not i'm not sure no i don't know <laughs> yeah sorry i'm not much oh, I, I, I'm, also, I'm also not sure so thank you yeah okay i have another question about the uh, silicon band gaps actually could you go to this slide uh, yeah um so um where can you can you walk me through a bit? Uh, how did you extract the band gap of silicon uh, from DFT in this? Is this from like the difference of the energy levels in the Concharm orbitals from a band structure calculation? Yes. Uh, um, okay. And which which uh, at which uh, inverse base point did you calculate it then? At which? Oh, I oh, this we sample the brilliant zone and we use uh, I think for these calculations we used 21 by 21 by 21 uh, uh, Moncourse pack mesh. Ah, and, okay. Yeah. And at which point did you extract the uh, or is this an average over the whole brilliant zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, ah. uh, yeah, you uh, all right, so uh, silicon has an indirect band gap. So this is like the minimum of the valence band uh, minus the maximum of the conduction band. Uh, so this is just the energy difference. All right, but silicon is is indirect. So you know you gotta. So it's not the homo lumo gap, or like that's what uh, it, it is. It is. It is the homo lumo gap. Yeah, it is the homo lumo gap. Ah, okay. Thank you. That was my my question regarding that about this accuracy. And uh, I actually have another question. Um, what uh, from your slide forty two um, about uh, in the equation of state here? Um, so um, the low density regime, especially in this. Um, in this, the, the black squares of this experiment here, um, is that it's, it looks to me like a pretty much uh, that in the low density regime, it's still troublesome to find an accurate um, equation of state. Is it maybe also from, so does it also stem from the experiment maybe at some point uh, to some degree? Because it looks to me a bit more outlierish, the, uh, the Higgs experiment. Of the laser is that? Uh, yeah, the uh, there is huge uncertainty in those. They're kind of old, and uh, since then there has been, you know, much bigger improvement in the in the in the equipment and uh, and uh, diagnostics, and uh, the green the blue upside down triangles and the red diamonds are the latest data on the you know the most sophisticated equipment that supposedly provide the highest accuracy mm. um the, yeah the black squares are uh, are kind of old um, ah makes sense so, and uh yeah they yeah this is um uh, uh, yeah this is a uh, difficult business experimentally too to obtain this data as you can see they use gas guns explosive uh uh you know uh z machines uh where you like uh, you know compress uh you know the plasma with with uh, magnetic fields um and yeah there is lots of work 
of uh, you've been pointing ex where this um, Hugonio is, both experimentally and theoretically, um, but it's challenging. You see all the all the PBE or or all the AIMD models very well agree way down here below one hundred. Some some disagreement here starts to grow, uh, and they kind of all join back together way up here. Uh, all those, the chemical models are all over the place, um, um, but um, you know that's. Uh, uh, I think those actually have some parameters in them like determined from experiment. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, um, so just about this comparison of the FPOS, which was pro is the equation of state by the Militzer group from Berkeley, correct? Yes. Um, so they use PIMC at, to, uh, at some point uh, and FPOS do at some point use their data at higher temperatures? When they start to use PMC, or did you calculate? Yeah, that? yeah, PMC. Their PMC data starts about here, where uh, the green and the black curves kind of join. Below that is uh, they have molecular dynamics with PBE, mm -hmm. uh, which is very close to the light blue curve, uh, which is also molecular dynamics with PBE. And and here. Uh, it, this agreement between the curves in, in this region of maximum compression is actually uh, very sensitive to initial conditions. So, um, uh, all right, so very, so if you, if you need to first find E naught, P naught, and Rho naught. And from using those as initial conditions, you launch your cogonio. Um, but, uh, when you uh, have a theory that you have a dis or you have a disagreement in in, a, in, a, in the initial conditions, right? And this is very sensitive to those initial conditions and the slight differences uh, can be attributed to those. Uh, but you know anything within like one or two percent, uh, you can you can say that uh, you know those are about those, those are about the same. We do see some slight increase in maximum compression in our in our uh, with, with our equation of state that that is not negligible, you know, and it falls right between uh, these uh, very recent Monte Carlo uh, estimations. Um, but uh, uh, so yeah, back to your question: the black curve, uh, uh, Mulder's curve. Uh, is uh, is PIMC somewhere above this 250 GPA and below that is PBE and it very well agrees with uh, other PBE based models. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That is very informative. Very interesting to see how that differs. So any further questions from the audience? I mean, I have a very quick uh, practical question. Um, how does the efficiency or the compute time compare between something like KDT and KDT? Zero? Uh, oh, oh, well, KDT zero is much more computationally expensive than uh, KDT 16 because it's, uh, because it's hybrid, sure. right? Yeah. This hard tree fork exact exchange part uh, is com very computationally expensive. So, it with on our clusters, we still can't run molecular dynamics with hybrids. Um, it, so, KDT zero much more expensive than KDT sixteen uh, computationally. But it KDT, KDT zero comes at the same computational cost as PBE zero and a thermal. Functional such as KDT sixteen come at the same computational cost as you know their ground state counterpart. Sure. Um, can you maybe give something like is it um, an order of magnitude uh, more expensive, two orders of magnitude, or is it uh, difficult to say? Um. So, uh, meta GGA, I would say meta GGA level. 
uh, so molecular dynamics with meta GGA level would be like an order of magnitude more expensive than K than uh, GGAs, but it's still doable, right? Uh, and hybrids, uh, I don't, hybrids are much more, maybe two orders of magnitude more. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, newer versions of uh, VASP claim that they become faster and faster um, uh, with hybrids, with like algorithmic development and um, better parallelization uh, schemes, and uh, uh, they they focus on hybrids a lot. They target uh, speed up with hybrids a lot. So and also so. Maybe with the newest version, VASP uh, 6.3, I think they have a significant speed up of hybrids and also of gamma point calculations. So uh, uh, maybe soon uh, uh, one can probably do uh, molecular dynamics with hybrids, but that will also be in, uh, dependent on thermodynamic conditions. So if you go kind of high up in temperature, you have so many bands that, uh, you know, doesn't matter, you know, how much, you know, faster your algorithms are, you're still going to be, you know, have such a high number of bands that the hybrids will be, you know, not, 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 not that applicable. All right. Perfect. Uh, thank you. So, if we don't have any further questions, I would end the seminar right here. Um, Daniel, thank you for a very, very interesting talk and for this discussion. 